السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو آر لائیو نیوز رپورٹ ہی فرام آر لندن اسٹوڈیوز ٹوڈے وی بگین آر پروگرام ود آر لائیو نیوز اسپیشل فرام فرام حضور ٹور ہی ان یوروپ سو ود آؤٹ فردر ڈیو لیس گو ٹو آر آر ٹیم ان نیدرلینڈس وے قمر احمد صاحب از شوئنگ اس دا مین رپورٹ فرام دیر just yesterday night we actually captured that moment the emotions the sentiments of the people uh, here is a short glimpse of his holiness's arrival just yesterday night on the 25th of september 2019 at approximately 10 a.m local time hazrat mirza masur ahmed may allah be his helper departed for his tour of europe his holiness will be attending the annual conventions of the netherlands and france as well as addressing European dignitaries <coughs> in both Paris and Berlin. Many members of the local Jamaat were gathered to see off their beloved Khalifa. Before departure, Hazur led those present in a silent prayer. Amen. On the 25th of September 2019 at approximately 8 p.m. local time His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masur Ahmed may Allah be his helper arrived in Nantspeet the Netherlands His Holiness was welcomed by the deputy mayor Gert Vandenberg along with local neighbors and members of the Jamaat Following his arrival Hazur led the Maghrib and Isha prayers at the Bait al-Nur Mosque Nanspeet is a town in the central province of Gelderland in the Netherlands. It has a population of 27,000 people. Over the weekend, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community Netherlands will hold its 39th annual convention, also known as the Jalsa Salana. Hazrat Khalifa Tan Masih V, may Allah be his helper, will be gracing this event with his presence. Zakla so as you've seen his holiness hazrat amir al mu'minin ayyadahu allah ta'ala bin sahil aziz arrived yesterday uh, in holland to be greeted by many people i am currently joined by amir sab holland assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa alaikum assalam um of course this is a very historic moment for jamaat uh, in holland uh, many people as we have seen are already here the preparations are now due to begin for the jalsa salana inshallah tomorrow um how has it been this moment and what are the preparations and the sentiments of the people here Uh, you're asking many questions of course there's also a huge event with many aspects so of course jamaat is uh, delighted and uh, uh, very emotional to receive hazrat uh, khalifa masi and uh, to pray with him which is an extraordinary experience and we are aware of that where the khalifa is and what step he does and what he says and what he prays and god is hearing them so we are it is uh, inspiring is to have fair face in the acceptance of prayers and on the other hand we have two things one is to prepare properly so all the people were busy you see they're still uh, working and to to get it as best as possible and we are mm, of course apologizing beforehand for any shortcomings which are there but the spirit is uh, huge you know and uh, uh, intention to make the best out of you know that's all the jamaat members all over the world are in that, that way the same for this purpose to spread this message of peace which is headed by khalifa al-masi and by his example and his speech and his words all over the world and here in holland he spoke also in, in the parliament in uh, 2015 where they when we laid the first stone in the new, new mosque in almere he's now going to open that so there's also a huge event which is coming up after the jalsa which is of immense importance and uh, so um so we feel also the great task ahead so as we said shom uh, simple word you know it and most muslims will understand it who are not ahmadis you had akhirin i say it in my own words show it 
Uh, so he gives now many times Yuma's uh, detailed uh, accounts of the the Awalin, the Suhabis, as an example for us to follow them. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're, in this mood we are. Okay. Of course, as Amir Sahib Holland has just said, uh, people are waiting uh, quite uh, excitedly for the Dil Sultana, also for the inauguration of the mosque. And His Holiness uh, has previously also spoken about the fact that our mosques are beacons of light that illuminate their surroundings. And we can't wait to see this inauguration, inshallah, very soon. Jazakallah uh, for now. That is our update. Back to you, Noshiran, in the studio. Jazakallah, Kamar Sahib, for the live update. And that was our live report on Huzur's tour of Europe. And now for the rest of the stories, let's take a look at some of the stories from around the world. The fury of Britain's Brexit inferno is so intense that it could encourage violence unless politicians tone down their rhetoric, the husband of a lawmaker murdered a week before the 2016 EU referendum said on Thursday. Parliament reached boiling point on Wednesday when Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his opponents engaged in hours of vitriolic argument over Brexit with lawmakers hurling allegations of betrayal and abuse of power across the chamber. Jo Cox, a 41-year-old parliamentarian from the opposition Labour Party, was murdered on June 16, 2016 by Thomas Mayer, a loner obsessed with Nazis and extreme right-wing ideology. She was the mother of two young children. Brexit has illustrated a United Kingdom divided about much more than European Union and has fueled soul-searching about everything from succession and immigration to capitalism, empire and Britishness itself. The rage and ferocity of the Brexit debate has shocked allies of a country that has prided itself as a confident and mostly tolerant pillar of Western economic and political stability. Cox was clear that the language across the Brexit schism was troubling and that the United Kingdom needed to come together rather than tear itself apart. Johnson returned to the chamber on Wednesday after the Supreme Court ruled that his decision to suspend Parliament earlier this month was unlawful. Johnson told the 1922 committee, It is a surrender act, arguing that it hurt Britain's negotiating stance with the EU. The Prime Minister added that he took threats to lawmakers very seriously. Hannah South, MTA News. President Donald Trump pressed Ukraine's leader to investigate Democratic presidential frontrunner Joe Biden in coordination with the U.S. Attorney General and Trump's personal lawyer, according to a summary of a telephone call released by the Trump administration on Wednesday. The official account of the half-hour July call with President Vladimir Zelensky laid bare an astonishing exchange of requests, pledges, and ingratiation, including some unrelated to Biden. The summary was released a day after U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the Democratic-led chamber was launching an official impeachment inquiry, setting up a political showdown that threatens Trump's presidency as he campaigns for re-election in 2020. A Pelosi aide said that in two meetings with Democratic leaders on Wednesday, the speaker suggested the possibility of making the inquiry narrowly focused on Trump and his dealings with Ukraine after months of House committee hearings on a range of other activities by the president. No final decisions were made, the aide said. The Washington Post first reported the possible strategy earlier on Wednesday. The inquiry could lead to articles of impeachment in the House that could trigger a trial in the Senate on whether to remove Trump from office. The call occurred after Trump had ordered a freeze of nearly $400 million in American aid to Ukraine, which the administration only later released. The controversy arose after a whistleblower from within the U.S. intelligence community brought a complaint relating to Trump's conversation with Zelensky. Trump has repeatedly suggested wrongdoing by Biden and his son, but has offered no evidence to back up the assertion. The Justice Department said Barr would not recuse himself from Ukraine-related investigations despite Democratic demands. Anil Khan, MT News. 